Hey everyone, welcome back to Cole Harbor YouTube channel. We're here with Claude from Lola Innovations at their new facility that they moved into recently. I'm here to talk about Q4 2024 as we move into Q1 2025 and what to expect at SHOT Show. So quick recap about what Lola Innovations has been up to. They've released the MH1 binocular goggle. This is a magnesium, hybrid magnesium alloy. Yeah, so it you know, utilizes magnesium and titanium components on it. Right. And it's been designed from the ground up to be a modular system, correct? Absolutely. So in, in the launch configuration that's been in the market for about a few months now, it's just basic, a simple binocular, you know, two channel straight configuration with a onboard CR123, a battery port. But there are plans for a, and we'll talk about this in a bit, a monocular as well as some more exotic options. So I'll let Claude give you guys a bit of an update on what's imminent as well as what's coming over the next few months into Q4, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's coming in 2025. Sure, so appreciate the interest, Steve. So in terms of kind of what we're doing right now, what we're focusing on, as a lot of you might see, might have seen on our Instagram recently, we recently announced that we've just finished our monocular adapter, and we are now putting that into production. This monocular adapter, it gives you the capability, unlike any other monocular adapter, to actually keep your manual gain keep your eye elimination, unlike every other adap adapter on the market, essentially. Um, still, it's pretty lightweight. It's lighter than a PVS-14 standard. We're still looking at ways to possibly trim off a little bit of weight during production. This is not really gonna change the footprint of it too much. It's gonna stay relatively the same. The function is going to stay exactly the same. So you have power via a single AA battery. Um, you have your gain circuit, it's completely universal, so you can use either a three-pad tube, which mm -hmm. I know you guys use a lot, or you can use any EGAC tube you'd like. So basically, for those of you who are watching, it's essentially you're going to be able to use MX11769 yep. tubes, right? Exactly. And that's going to be, I guess, users or dealers will fish that wire through to plug the gain control into that top pod, correct? Exactly, yeah. It's a complete direct fit, so you don't have to do any sort of crazy modifications to the housing. You don't need to you know, desolder pigtails or anything like that, voiding your tube's warranty. All you have to do is plug and play. You have a four position rotary switch on the actual housing. So this is gonna give you off, on, IR low, and high. What kind of power level are the, is the illuminator? So I can't speak to the exact power level yet, mm -hmm. but the high mode is gonna give you pretty substantial illumination. You're gonna get about 50 meters out of it. Wow, okay. And just, sorry, quick recap of, uh, of these two illuminators that are on board. Are these just different powers or they have different illumination patterns? So first off, they are different wavelengths. That's the first thing about them. So the low power, we typically try to stick with a 940 nanometer illuminator. That's gonna give you your more like, quote, stealth illumination. It's completely invisible to the naked eye 940. However, US tubes, they don't pick up 940 as well. So it's also not as bright. Um, so what we really like to say that Illuminator is for, it's for really admin tasks. It's for map reading so that you have limited splashback or zero splashback, unlike the other Illuminators on the market. And then your high power, which is an 850, that's gonna give you your basically ultra high power illumination mm -hmm. for PID on a suspect of your law enforcement or for just, you know, spotting targets out there. Right, and this is, I guess, the, the design language and the control interface is gonna be very similar between these, either the binocular and the monocular configuration. Exactly, creating a basically pattern repetition or control repetition, I should say, on our systems is something that's really important to us because if you've used the MH1, that means you automatically know how to use the monocular. Mm -hmm. You'll know all the controls and they'll be very, very familiar to you. Right. And also what I noticed here on the side is you guys have, and I don't know how final this is, and we'll cut to B-roll on this, but the, you guys have kind of cut this trough extra wide to accommodate for a wider variety of J-arms. Yeah. So unfortunately, something in the industry that I'm sure you've noticed is... Standard no, is not too standard. Oh my God, dude. Nobody follows a universal spec. And something that's important to us, obviously, is a universal fit. However, we can accommodate that. You know, it's always a struggle kind of going after that universal fit, mm -hmm. but once you find it, it's just, it's a beautiful thing for the end user because you don't have to worry about, oh, well, I have this J-arm, oh crap, it doesn't fit, let me go spend another 
two hundred dollars, right? We want you to be take able a to Dremel use, to it or something like that. Yeah, we yeah, want you to be able like to that. use any J arm. You don't have to modify your device, and it's just plug and play, direct fit. Great. Let's talk a little bit about some of these new colorways. Like sure, the FDE definitely caught my eye because love FDE. Big uh, FDE fan. Yeah, and I think, is this a anodized finish or is it Cerakote? No, so we use all Cerakote in-house. We use H-Series Cerakote. I believe that it just gives a better fit and finish. Mm -hmm. And also the Cerakote Rockwell hardness is a bit harder than anodizing, which in layman's terms essentially means that the finish is going to be more durable. It's going to be more scratch resistant, um, as well as Cerakote as a coating, it actually goes into the material instead of sitting on top of the mm -hmm. material. So anodizing is gonna wear away a little bit sooner than Cerakote. Cerakote's just a little bit more premium and we want to take that step to ensure that the housing is well protected. I think it's, you know, it still maintains, for those of you who, who are thinking about the MH1 or already own an MH1, it still maintains that, that, you know, that nice matte finish, regardless of whatever color you have. So basically they're available in black, FDE and OD. Yep. yep. Now we've started to finally push out the colors. I believe a week and a half ago, we started pushing out the FDEs. And now this week, we should be pushing out the OD greens to suppliers. And these are, these are similar to the colors for your legacy products. So, you know, for those of you who are, you know, longtime LLI supporters, you guys should be familiar with these colorways. I don't think they've shifted substantially from, from those legacy products. Absolutely, yeah. The only one missing, sadly, in my opinion, is gray. The gray, yeah. I yeah. really liked gray, gray so if you guys want to see gray housings, please let us know Take because I'd love to bring them back. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. It's very sharp, yeah. Do we want to talk a little bit about the battery compartment? Because, you know, the whole point of the MH1 was this modularity, and one of the things that, that at launch, at least, of quite a few customers were asking about was like, when is the remote battery option going to be available? So I'll let you speak to that. Sure. Yeah. So in terms of the remote battery and MH1 in general, like this is an important preface to this conversation. So the whole design philosophy behind the system was, you know, first and foremost, let's create something that can never be obsolete. It can always adapt to any situation, any new trend in the market. We don't want you to have to as a user, sell your housing off a year later because you're following a new trend in the market. Instead, you can stay with the existing system and you can uh, buy that accessory, that adapter essentially. Another huge thing for us in the design philosophy of the MH1 was also, we understand that customers have a variety of different budgets and some are very, very stuck to certain budgets. We want each and every person to be able to buy the features that they actually want with the system and not pay for the features that they don't want. Mm -hmm. I've met plenty of people that don't want external battery. I've met pl plenty of people that don't want onboard battery, right? Give the user that freedom and they can choose what they want to do with the system. So with all that being said, like Steve said, there is an accessory we're coming out with. I know a lot of you guys are going to be very excited about. It's actually our new four fuel battery compartment. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to make this device the most vers versatile device on the market for power options. Mm -hmm. The new four fuel compartment will be able to use AA, CR123, and AAA in the same compartment. Um, it accomplishes this with a couple different sleeves that we provide with that battery compartment and an extended cap for batteries like AA, AAA as well as the fourth fuel option being an external power port on the back of the unit. Now, is it a, it's a, it's a Fisher or is it gonna be Limo? So we're gonna be doing both. We will do Fisher and Limo. Fisher, I believe is the first one that's gonna come out just because I believe that to be a little bit better of a connector. It's type. more of a modern connector for sure. Because yeah. Limo is more of a, like an Anvis standard, right? It's more modern. I think the pins are more robust. I can't tell you how many Fisher connector, not Fishers, can't tell you how many Limo connectors I've broken. And I mean, anybody that's used Anvis can probably say the same thing. They break pretty damn easy. But the coolest thing about this external power is that the board inside is a smart board. So essentially it tells the battery pack, hey, I'm gonna draw power from you first because that's your reserve power bank. And then it's going to seamlessly switch to onboard power without shutting off the device, without you having to unplug the device. You can obviously have both plugged in at the same time with zero issues. Will do users need to run an onboard battery to use the remote battery? You do not. Okay. 
That's cool. We do not have to do that. So, so. that so this battery, the four fuel compartment could be empty, and then you just plug the cable in, and it should exactly. Power yep. Okay. You can kind of just configure, and again, that's like the dream with this system. You can kind of just configure it however you want as a user and use it however you want for your application. Right, yeah, so I mean, I, I, I don't know how important this is, but maybe it's important for some, but you know, for those of you who are concerned about goggle weight, not that the battery weighs that much, I think it's maybe like 10 grams, yeah, something, something like that. Like that. You don't have to run the onboard power, you can just run the offboard, right? So it's something to take note of, I suppose. Do we want to talk a little bit about what to expect from LLI at SHOT Show? So, SHOT Show this year is going to be pretty interesting. As you know, you stopped by our booth last year. That's right. We had a ton of success at our booth, thankfully. Thank you to everybody who came out and checked us out at our booth. We've upgraded our booth space this year, so now I believe we're booth 61106. We'll, we'll put it into the... Yeah. We'll put it on the screen, maybe. <laughs> we now have double the booth size, so hopefully we'll have double the goodies to show off at SHOT Show this year. But some of the things we hope to show off is a production sample for our new Pano, essentially. Mm -hmm. So what that's going to be is, it's going to be basically a replacement of arms and pots for the existing MH1 bridge. And it will allow you to basically make your MH1 into a Pano if you know, your financial means can accommodate that. Um, I know mine can't at this point. <laughs> It'll allow you to adapt your MH1 into a Pano, giving you the flexibility to transition between a monocular, binocular, and a panoramic device. Right, and is the like is the pano config going to be available for sale like out of the box as a full like pano housing kit, or sure. is it or is it like you know you have to buy the MH1 first and then get the panel pods? So we are going to offer it as a standalone pano as well, um, just like with the monocular adapter. We're also going to be offering that as a standalone monocular. And eventually we will also be selling bridge systems independently for users that, you know, let's say you're buying one monocular to, like first, and then you have the means to buy another monocular. Then you can buy the bridge system and you can tie them together. And you've now made a complete buy now. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of split up the costs on a night vision system. You can scale up. That's a very popular thing. Exactly. And you don't, again, you don't have to resell what you had just bought for a terrible, terrible loss like mm. most people do in this industry. So some other things to expect at SHOT Show. We have some things planned. We can't really say too much about them right now, but they're things that you guys have learned about pretty soon. We should be dropping some teasers on Instagram. We will um, visit your booth and probably do a video coverage as well. So yeah. if you guys are subscribed or whatever, you guys can see that SHOT Show coverage probably either the week of or the week following SHOT Show. Oh, there is one thing I forgot to mention in regards to accessories that we're bringing out in the near future. So I'll just kind of jump back to that real quick. We are working on the production sample for our panning arms that will essentially make the MH1 a panning system. It will allow you to adjust your field of view from 40 to 60 degrees. So it's, so it's articulating and panning. Exactly. And is it, is yeah. it going to be like you just buy it like a fixed angle or is it users can just adjust? No, I think the fixed angle is detrimental to the user experience. I think that, so what we're chasing after is a adjustable panning mm -hmm. with preset detents. Oh, I see. So essentially you can choose from, you know, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, or 60, or 60 degrees. Right, and um, I guess if you if you put boom slangs, that could, you could expand that even further. But yeah, you could also configure with boom slangs or RPO to make your setup lighter. Um, boom slangs will obviously give you a little bit more field of view. Um, but that's an accessory that we've heard a lot of feedback about. People have been wanting that. So that is something on our docket. We're just wrapping up the monocular adapter and the four fuel battery first. Great. So I think that wraps it up for our time here at the LLI. So thanks for watching, guys. As usual, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll make sure Claude checks in and you know, responds. But otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. See you guys.